Hello, it's me. Um, I'm going to interview my dad about his favorite brand. Thanks, Dad. What product have you picked to talk about? Okay, Archie. Today we're going to talk about Iron Brew. Uh, now, most people outside of Scotland will probably not have heard of Iron Brew. Iron Brew is a, a soft drink that is, is, is very popular in Scotland, but also in Russia and England. Um, it's famous because it's, it's probably the only brand that outsells either Coca-Cola or Pepsi in its domestic market. And um, it's something that's, that's, you know, very iconic and I like very much. Why did you pick Iron Brew? Um, well, I guess, you know, as a child growing up, um, Iron Brew was, was one of these things that were very prevalent in society at the time. Um, a lot of people drunk it, a lot of people associated it with being Scottish. Um, so it's a very, um, it's a, a very emotive product and uh, something that I like very much. How has the advertising changed over the years? Well, the advertising for Iron Brew has, 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 has changed quite dramatically. And uh, what happened in the early days of Iron Brew is they used to have a, a comic strip called Bab Brew. Um, and, and unfortunately, in the, the 1970s, well, fortunately, they decided to change that because it was, it was um, slightly racist and, and wasn't politically correct. So they got ahead of the times and actually changed their advertising. They then started to focus on a very Scottish form of advertising. Um, and advertised it as Scotland's other national drink, which was a play on whiskey, which is, uh, is, is regarded as Scotland's national drink. Um, and they played on the iron element of the, the product and, 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 and went with Made in Scotland from Gerda's. Uh, and they had advertising campaigns around that, that that were very patriotic and very Scotland focused. The irony is there isn't actually any iron in the product, but it's, it's basically orange based. But um, you know that was that was that was the way they, they advertised it. The the product was formed in 1901. It was initially known as Iron Brew, uh, but the product neither contained iron nor was it brewed. So they had to actually change the name. Uh, and again, when it was relaunched after the war, because they stopped producing it during the war, and um, they, they they changed the name. How has the packaging changed? Well, it used to be um, it used to be that you got iron brew in glass bottles, and in fact, that's that's the way it tastes best. Um, what used to happen is you used to buy a glass bottle, uh, and you um, used to tape the glass bottle back, and they used to give you money back. And they called that the kids used to refer to them as glass checks because basically, what would happen is your parents would give you the bottles, you know, in lieu of pocket money, and uh, you, you'd go and take the bottles back, and you'd try and find bottles lying around and take them back, and Get a few, a few, a few, a few pennies for to go and get some penny chews. And um, they've recently stopped doing the glass bottles, which is a bit of a shame because it's quite environmentally friendly. Um, and you know, they but now they tend to use cans and and plastic bottles. The plastic bottles don't taste nearly as good. The the the, the um, brew is, has a different taste out of the plastic bottles. So it's a bit of a shame, but that's how it is. What issues will we face? the product in the future? Um, well, I guess uh, I guess in about 1980, Iron Brew launched um, Low Carry Iron Brew, which became Diet Iron Brew, which then became Sugar Free Iron Brew. And that kind of addressed the issue surrounding full fat sugar drinks. Um, Iron Brew itself is probably uh, a much bigger seller still. Um, but I think the sugar in that is gonna be problematic. You can see in Thailand that they're talking about a sugar tax they're going to introduce a sugar tax in the UK. Um, a lot of people view soda as being quite unhealthy, and I think that will actually put some um, some restrictions on the product and, and its ability to sort of survive going forward. So I think that's certainly an issue for the product. And um, bars itself has been very inventive, though, both in terms of its advertising and also in terms of the way it um, makes things. So. Well, thank you for spending time with me today, and I hope you have a nice day. Thank you, Archie.